Good morning everyone, my name is Jacob Kaufman, I'm the nerd on the street, and today this is just an off-the-cuff video. I woke up this morning and I checked my email like I usually do first thing in the morning, and I had gotten an email on my Gmail account, which I do still use for some things, although I've been trying to migrate off of it, and the email was from Google themselves, and it's called, it's subjected, Improvements to our Privacy Policy and Privacy Controls. Um, so you've probably been getting a lot of these emails recently because uh, Europe, two years ago, the European Union passed their new consumer data protections law. And even though they passed it two years ago, it included some pretty strong protections. So they gave companies two years to actually get into compliance with this law before it went into effect, basically. It's called the GDPR, it stands for General Data Protection Regulation. And I've looked into whether or not I need to do anything for it. For one thing, companies outside the European Union only have to worry about this if they're actively targeting European customers, which I can just avoid doing that if I want to avoid having to do anything for the GDPR because I don't need to say the names of any European countries if the European Union doesn't want me to. For another thing though, Nerd on the Street doesn't really collect your data. If you go to our website, we keep a minimal amount of data. I've talked about the analytics software we use in the past. We're already in compliance. But you've probably been getting these GDPR updates from other companies. I've gotten them from DigitalOcean. I've gotten them from Blender Grid. I've gotten them from some weird websites that I signed up for a long time ago that I don't remember giving any personal information to anyway. But this one from Google caught my eye because you guys know how I feel about Google. You know that I am not the most pro-Google person in the world. And when they say improvements to our privacy policy, I wondered just what they meant to improvements. So I clicked on the link in their email, their new privacy policy is available to read here. We're just gonna go through it this morning and I'm gonna kind of dissect this thing. Remember, if you're watching this video on nerdonthestreet.com, good for you, you don't have to worry about this. Especially if you're a Nerd Club member because then you're not even seeing any ads on nerdonthestreet.com. But if you're watching this video on YouTube, which the statistics say you probably are, then you are agreeing to this privacy policy. Uh, you are using a service which published this privacy policy. You're also doing that if you're using Gmail. Google Calendar, Android, Google Chrome, you know, all these things. So we're going to go through this and just take a look at what exactly Google's official privacy policy is. This is what they're telling us about. All right, so let's get into this. This takes effect May 25th, um, so in about 12 days here. First of all, they define our services. And Google's services include Google Apps, of course, uh, Google Sites makes sense, and devices like Search, YouTube, and Google Home. So if you've bought one of those Google Home things, I have nothing to say to you. That was a bad decision if you bought one of those Google Home things because this is the privacy policy that, that now your entire house follows. Um, but I also like that they include platforms like the Chrome browser and the Android operating system. So these are included in their services. They're not calling these products. They're calling platforms that they make services. Now the Chrome browser is proprietary, so I buy that. You know, if you download Chromium, you're using an open source browser. Uh, but if you download Google Chrome, it's proprietary. You know what you're getting into when you download Google Chrome. They also define the Android operating system as one of their services, though, which I find really interesting because Android, the operating system itself is open source. Now, the Google Apps that they list up here, obviously not open source, but the Android operating system itself is open source. The fact that they include that as one of their services in their privacy policy kind of puts me off. I uh, just wanted to mention that. And then products that are integrated into third-party apps and sites like ads and embedded Google Maps. At nerdonthestreet.com we've only got one Google ad on our website anymore. It's in the sidebar on some of the pages and Nerd Club members can sign in and that ad is not even rendered. As you can see though I'm using Adblock. I strongly encourage you to. I've recently changed my stance on Adblock. I encourage everyone to use it because the only people we're hurting really is Google. We're, we're not hurting people like me because I'm not making ad revenue anyway with the new rules. So they list some ways you can manage your privacy. Uh, for example, you can sign up for a Google account, obviously. The rest of this paragraph is just basically an ad for, for Google services. We'll get down here. Uh, we want you to understand the types of information we collect. We want you to understand this. All right, Google, I'm helping them understand this. We collect information to provide better services to all our users all our users and this is actually repeated a lot throughout this privacy policy I read through it just before I started the video and we'll talk about the implications of that in a bit right here in the second paragraph of the actual privacy policy they say when you're not signed into a Google account we store the information we collect with unique identifiers tied to the browser application or device you're using 
um, and they give some excuses for why they do that, like language preferences across browsing sessions. They used to just do that using the top level domain. If you wanted a different language, you could go to Google dot whatever your country's code was to get a different language. But now they don't even respect that setting anymore and they collect your information to try and do that instead. I do like that they're open about using unique identifiers because a lot of websites say, oh, we store a lot of information, but it's not personally identifiable information, so we're fine. Google is very upfront. We store unique identifiers. You will be identified uniquely even if you're not signed into a Google account, they say right at the top. When you're signed in, we also collect information that we store with your Google account, uh, which we treat as personal information. So this unique identifier, they don't treat as personal information, but when you're signed in, they, in addition to this, also store some other stuff which they treat as personal information. So things you create or provide to us. Now provide to us is the obvious one. Anything you give to an online service, they'll be able to see. Things you create, you know, this is an or, so this is a separate part of the sentence, but they're saying right here, they collect things you create. Um, and they've got some pictures here and they explain you can probably tell which products they're talking about from the pictures though. We collect content you create, upload, or receive from others when using our services. This includes things like email you write and receive, email you write and receive, photos and videos you save. So if you're using Google Photos, which advertises unlimited photo storing with Google's uh, compression algorithms, you are giving Google permission to see all of the photos and videos that you save. Google Docs and spreadsheets you create, which last year there was a story about a journalist who Google took some of their docs offline because they were covering sensitive topics, and comments you make on YouTube videos. So if you leave a comment on this video, that is going to be collected pretty obviously. I think the photos and videos people generally understand that Google is going to track that stuff in exchange for that unlimited storage. I think the things people really don't think about are the email thing and the docs and spreadsheets. Google does go through your documents and they detail how they do that later in this privacy policy, but they do. If you use Google Docs to type documents, they scan through the text in those documents um, and they look at the pictures you put in those documents. And as they note later in this policy, they will take action based on what is in your documents. Um, and then the email you write and receive, like I said, I still use Gmail for some things, but this is one of the reasons why I switched off of Gmail. Uh, you know, as you can see, I've got three browser tabs up here. I've got Gmail open, I've got Fastmail open, which I use for my Nerd in the Street email, and then I've got Zoho open as well, which my family uses for their Kaufman.com email, just because Zoho is free. I'm actually not into Zoho as a company. Fastmail is great. I've also got a ProtonMail email account, so there are some really good privacy respecting email providers out there. And they actually have websites that are better and faster than Gmail's website. They provide nicer looking interfaces than Gmail. And their support is a lot more receptive than Gmail. Because when you're paying for email, uh, the company actually has an incentive to make it a good experience. Whereas Gmail, you know, they, they can just say, oh, it's free. We don't need to worry about what people think about it. So I switched to Fastmail because they say that they don't look at your emails. They say they don't look at your emails, whereas Google says they do look at your emails right in their privacy policy. So keep that in mind before you go using any Google services, really. And if you don't like that, take action like I have. Start moving yourself off of Google services. All right, but we'll, we'll move on here. Uh, information we collect as you use our services. Your apps, browsers, and devices. We collect information about the apps, browsers, and devices you use to access Google services. Uh, that makes sense. Now, they say that helps us provide features like automatic product updates, okay, and dimming your screen if your battery runs low. Now, why does Google need to know anything about my phone in order to provide this functionality? You know, if my battery runs low, they can program Android. You know, I, I have an Android phone, to be clear, because open source and Google privacy policy is still better than proprietary Apple, as far as my assessment goes right now. Uh, but I have an Android phone. They could just program Android to where if the battery percentage drops below 10%, it lowers the screen brightness. They don't need to send that information anywhere else, but they use that as an example in their privacy policy about why they need to collect information so that they can remotely give the command to dim your screen if your battery runs low, because that's how Google rolls. The information we collect includes unique identifiers, browser type and settings, device type and settings, operating system, mobile network information, including carrier name and phone number, and application version number, all those things, I'm not too worried about those in particular. 
We also collect information about the interaction of your apps, browsers, and devices with our services, including IP address, crash reports, system activity, and the date, time, and refer URL of your request. So they are logging the date and time of any of your requests to their services. So if you check your Gmail on your Android phone, they log the date and time that you checked your email. If you check your Google Calendar on your phone, they log the date and time that you checked your calendar. So they essentially do build a profile of what you're doing with your phone when you're doing it. And not just your phone, but any Google services. We collect this information when a Google service on your device contacts our servers. Uh, if you're using an Android device, your device periodically contacts Google servers. So we collect this information periodically, basically. They also collect information about your activity, which we use to do things like recommend a YouTube video you might like. And nothing more nefarious than that, right? except they list other ones later, which we'll get to. The information we collect may include terms you search for, videos you watch, views and interactions with content and ads, content and ads. So even just what content you're viewing, they can collect. Voice and audio information, purchase activity, people with whom you communicate or share content, okay. Activity on third-party sites and apps that use our services, which for all I know could include nerdonthestreet.com for non-nerd club members because I've got a Google ad in the sidebar. And Chrome browsing history you've synced with your Google account. And that goes even if you're using Chromium. If you're using Chromium, the open source one, but you've set it up to sync with your Google account, they collect your browsing history as part of their privacy policy. Now there is a, a way, or at least last time I used Chrome, there was a feature where you could encrypt your browsing history and bookmarks and everything before sending it to Google. And at the time they said that if you use that feature they would not be able to see any of your stuff. I'm still using Firefox because I do pretty much need multi-device syncing in my browser, but I do not want to give Google full reign over my browsing history. And I know there's incognito windows and things you can use to get around that, but it's honestly just a nicer peace of mind if I can click any link I want without worrying about what Google's going to think of me for doing that. If you use our services to make and receive calls or send and receive messages, we may collect telephony log information like your phone number, calling party number, so we're tracking who you're calling, yeah, receiving party number, who you're calling, forwarding numbers, time and date, so who you're calling, when you're calling them, how long you talked to them for. Guys, this is all the stuff that the NSA was collecting a couple years ago. And Edward Snowden said, hey guys, your telephone carriers are logging all of this information and giving it to the NSA, and everyone got really upset about it. Do you guys remember that? It wasn't wiretapping that happened a few years ago, it was metadata that Edward Snowden leaked out that the NSA was collecting. It was call metadata, which was who you were calling, when you called them, how long you called them for. Routing information basically includes your location because that's where the calls are physically being routed to and from. This is stuff we got mad at the NSA for collecting a few years ago, and Google just flat out says that they're doing it now. And I don't see a lot of people getting mad at Google for doing that. Oh, and look, the very next section is your location information. Great. Uh, we collect information about your location when you use our services, which, once again, includes the Android platform, the Android operating system, the Chrome browser. I mean, just the Android operating system, they listed that as one of their services, remember? Earlier in this video, I was like, wow, it's an open source operating system, but they call it a service. That means that anywhere, anywhere at all that I'm using my phone, they can collect my location information just because I'm using Android and it's covered in their privacy policy. And your location can be determined with GPS, IP address, sensor data from your device, and information about things near your device, like Wi-Fi access points. Now, personally, I do turn off my Android device's location when I'm not using any of the location functionality. Now, they say you can turn on location history if you want to save and manage your location information in your account, which I have location history turned off. However, the fact that Google says they're allowed to collect information about my location tells me that even though I have location history turned off, which it is by default, they are probably still saving that data. It's just that I am not able to save and manage that location information within my account they're the only ones who can see it so it's actually pretty stupid that I have that turned off but you know it's just a tiny little peace of mind that I have in some circumstances Google also collects information about you from publicly accessible sources so if your name appears in your local newspaper not even on CNN if your name appears in your local newspaper Google search engine may index that article and display it to other people obviously that's just how Google search engine works we may also collect information about you from trusted partners 
including marketing partners who provide us with information about potential customers of our business services and security partners who provide us with information to protect against abuse, which we'll talk about later. We also receive information from advertisers to provide advertising and research services on their behalf. So trusted partners, if you've been paying attention to the whole Facebook debacle, I'm fairly certain that the CEO of Facebook had to testify in front of Congress recently because one of their trusted partners really shouldn't have been trusted. But Google says, we may also collect information about you from trusted partners. All right, pretty vague. We use various technologies to collect and store information, including cookies, pixel tags, local storage, such as web browser storage or application data caches, databases, and server logs, and why Google collects data. And by the way, here's what Google thinks that people look like. Uh, I don't think I've talked about this before. I really hate Google's art style. Ever since they changed to this new flat logo and they started doing these little caricatures of people, they think this is what a human looks like. They draw these, these pictures of, of what they think humans are, what they think their customers look like, which are just these... I mean, look at this woman. Her wrist is just as, as wide as her hand. You can look at my wrist. Obviously, on a human being, the hand is wider than the wrist. There's, there's a contour there. The hand goes out and then the wrist comes in, but... Google just draws these pictures of people, and they're just these deformed blobs. There was one earlier here, too. Yeah, same thing with the wrist going on there. And, like, the proportions are way off on all these people. And these aren't maybe the best examples, but just any time you go to, to Google.com or in any of Google's marketing emails, when you see pictures of people, take a look at those, because that's what Google thinks you look like. They think you're just a blob, and you need their technology to make you into a sophisticated human being, because otherwise you're just... Just one of these things walking around with all these you know, just masses of muscle in random places. It's weird. All right, we use data to build better services. I'm sure you do. All right, we use the information we collect from all our services, which include the Android operating system and the Chrome web browser and the Google.com website for the following purposes. Providing our services. That makes sense. Not going not gonna to spend time on that one. Maintain and improve our services. Uh, we use your information to ensure our services are working as intended, such as tracking outages or troubleshooting issues that you report to us. We use your information to make improvements to our services, like understanding which search terms are most frequently misspelled. Helps us improve spell check features used across our services. I've got a really big problem with this one. When companies say, we might use your information to improve our services, that is basically a blanket statement saying they can use your information to do anything that makes them money. Because think about it, from Google's point of view, first of all, if I'm making more money, I can put more money into servers and things that will make my services perform better. So I can sell your data, buy more servers, and that's improving my services right there. But let's say they're not going that far because that's a little extreme. This is saying they can use your information in internal case studies and things. They can serve you up A-B testing like Facebook used to do for your news feed. And, you know, Facebook was doing that in the name of improving their services. They were just trying to see, you know, they were trying to improve the, the feature of your news feed, trying to figure out what you wanted to see or maybe what you didn't want to see but would keep you on Facebook longer. They did that, um, Facebook did that, and that was improving their services. You know, Google is allowed to, to look through your search terms and since they talk about their spell check features across their services, you know, they're probably also looking through your Google Docs and seeing what you misspelled in your Google Docs. They're looking through your email and seeing what you misspelled there, all in the name of improving their spell check feature so that they can get more people using their services and make more money. They are using your data to make more money, and this is them giving themselves permission to do that, and you're agreeing to that if you use any of their services, including the Android operating system, which I do, to be fair. Develop new services, same thing I just said, we use the information we collect in existing services to help us develop new ones. For example, do you remember Google Picasa that was around a while ago? Um, if you used that, newsflash, Google used your information about how you organize your photos in Picasa in order to design and launch Google Photos. So congrats, if you used Picasa, you were part of the development team for Google Photos and you didn't even know it. Yeah, this just gives them a blanket statement to use your data internally within their company to develop new services to make more money. They don't need to make fake data to put into their, their services to test them. They can just grab some of your data and throw it in there because they've got permission to. Next up, providing personalized services including content and ads. And ads are the one we all know about. 
obviously they use the data they collect on you to serve you ads on things they think you're going to want to buy, which some people are okay with that. That's the big obvious one. We use the information we collect to customize our services for you, including providing recommendations, personalized content, and customized search results. Yes, if you do a Google search, you will get results based on what Google thinks you want to see, which I'm sure is just great for the scientific community. Google Play uses information like videos you've watched on YouTube to suggest new apps you might like, which is a little weird. I don't even know how that would work. Depending on your settings, we may also show you personalized ads based on your interests. If you search for mountain bikes, you may see an ad for mountain bikes. Like I said, everyone already kind of knows about that. They do note, we don't show you personalized ads based on what they determine to be sensitive categories, such as race, religion, sexual orientation, or health. Now on nerdofthestreet.com, I've turned off all sensitive categories from even being able to display anyway. So even non-personalized ads, you won't see any of that stuff on my website. I don't like that Google defines what a sensitive category is in this case, but that's already going on. That's a separate issue. We don't share information that personally identifies you with advertisers, such as your name or email, unless you ask us to they keep all of your information to themselves so the advertisers have to keep giving them more money to keep reaching you which makes sense they also use your information to measure performance we use data for analytics and measurement uh, so they do just use your data for analytics just straight up telling you to understand how our services are used for example we analyze data about your visits to our sites to do things like optimize product design once again we are going to use your information to improve our products to make us more money we also use data about the ads you, oh, by the way, you might be thinking, some people think this is necessary. Some people think that in order to improve your product, you have to collect information about how it's used. Of course, Jacob, of course they collect information about how their product is used. How else would they possibly know how I'm using their product and what I want their product to do and how they can make it better? They need to collect that data. I've got a counterpoint right here. I use a service called Standard Notes. The website for them is standardnotes.org. It's a note-taking service with a focus on privacy, and they note that your notes are encrypted and secured, so only you can decrypt them. No one but you can read your notes, not even the people who run Standard Notes. So if they can't see what I'm storing in their service, how does Standard Notes improve their product? They're just going to stagnate and die, obviously. Not quite. Here's an email I got from Standard Notes in December. They had sent out another email asking people to complete a survey about how they use Standard Notes. I completed the survey because I like that service and I appreciate that they don't collect my data, so I went and voluntarily gave them some information about how I use their services to help them make their product better. And then they sent out a follow-up email asking, what do you use Standard Notes for? And these people are really interesting because most emails you get from companies are from a no reply address that you can't reply to, it's just going to get to a computer and the computer will discard your message. Uh, but the people who run Standard Notes actually use a working email address and all of their marketing emails, you can reply directly to them to reach the people who run the service, which is pretty neat. And they said, feel free to describe your workflow to whatever extent you're comfortable. We don't include analytics tracking in any of our applications, so we depend on surveys like these to understand how people use Standard Notes. And guess what? I clicked reply on this email in December and I sent out a little bit of information. I said, yeah, I use notes for this, this, and this on your service and I like that it does this and I wish that this layout was a little better. And I even got a reply back from them about what I had been talking to them about. That is some real human interaction right there. Um, this is an alternative way to do things. Companies have the option to just ask you how you use their services and what you want to be better about the services. They have the option to do that. Do not fall into the trap of thinking that Google's way of doing things is the only way to do things. Google thinks, they think that they're smarter than you because you're just a blob who is nothing without their technology, but Google could not collect this information or they could not use this information to optimize their product design. They could just send out surveys and ask people what they want because people are intelligent or you know, not even asking what they want because I know some people don't know what they want until you show them. But they can ask how you use the services and you can describe that to them without them having to collect every single word that you write in an email or a document. Just some food for thought. Uh, we also use data about the ads you interact with to help advertisers understand the performance of their ad campaigns. We use a variety of tools to do this, including Google Analytics, which I refuse to use. I use an analytics platform called Matomo. It used to be called Pewik. I made a video about it a while back. When you visit sites that use Google Analytics, though, like basically every site on the internet other than nerdofthestreet.com, both Google and a Google Analytics customer may link information about your activity with activity from other sites that use our ad services. 
Um, so once again, even though I don't use Google Analytics on my website, since I've got a Google ad in the sidebar, Google is still tracking what you're doing on my website if you're not a Nerd Club member. If you are a Nerd Club member, like I said, PHP doesn't even render the ad on your screen. So I would like to remove that ad eventually though, because I don't like that Google has even that little bit of insight into my own website. Um, we use your information to communicate with you, obviously, like your email address. Uh, we may send you a notification if we detect suspicious activity like attempting to sign into your Google account, period it seems like, but they say from an unusual location. If you contact Google, which is pretty much impossible to do, uh, we'll keep a record of your request, which is probably not going to be answered in a timely manner, to help solve any issues you might be facing, which they probably won't be solved based on my experiences with both Google and YouTube support in the past. You know, I've, I've contacted Dailymotion support before, and Dailymotion is a hot steaming pile of garbage as a streaming platform, as a video platform, but the Dailymotion support is really great. I've contacted Dailymotion and they have actually made changes to their website to fix issues that I was having. They changed their uploader once. There was a bug in their uploader where one of my videos wasn't uploading and I contacted Dailymotion support and they responded back and said, oh, we, we just pushed an update based on that video you're trying to upload. Try uploading it again and then it worked. Every time I contact or every time I try to contact Google or YouTube, I usually don't get a response. I usually get sent to Google's community forums where you got a bunch of people who don't even work for Google telling you that it's your fault or you know everything's working as it's supposed to. So I think it's funny they maintain this facade of communicating. This is basically just, we can use your stuff to market to you ourselves. Uh, but all right, this is the most egregious part of this entire privacy policy in my opinion. We use your information, right? That's what we're under. We use the information we collect from all our services, including the Android operating system, the Chrome web browser, and all of our websites and apps to protect Google, the company, our users, and the public. So not only does Google use your information from everywhere to make money for themselves, they also use your information for the public good. And if Google was a government, that would make some sense, but then you might not be giving all of your information to them willingly. We use information to help improve the safety and reliability of our services. This includes detecting, preventing, and responding to fraud, abuse as defined by us, security risks, and technical issues that could harm our money-making abilities, our users, or once again, the public the public, which that kind of tells me that the government could come, any government could come knocking at Google's door and ask for information. And if, if the government is asking for it, Google can hand it over because that's for the public good. And that's covered right here. I mean, they say we, we use your information to protect the public. So if your government, no matter what country you're in, if your government wants some information about you, it's for the public good, we can hand it over. And we don't have to worry about getting sued for it. It's in our privacy policy. They're not even trying to fight it. They're, they're writing it into the privacy policy. We use different technologies to process your information for these purposes. We use automated systems that analyze your content. So they've got automated systems analyzing your emails and your documents to provide you with things like customized search results, personalized ads like we all know about, or other features tailored to how you use our services, which I'm afraid to ask about. Um, and we analyze your content, we analyze your emails and your documents to help us detect what we define as abuse, such as spam, malware, and illegal content in whatever country's laws we decide to follow this week. We also use algorithms to recognize patterns in data. So we use algorithms to recognize patterns in your emails and documents. And then they give an example about how great their services are. And this is one thing I don't like about these new, easier to read privacy policies is that people just write ads into them. Companies, they, I like that they're making their privacy policies easier to read and understand. They're dumbing down the language so people like us can understand it. You don't have to be a lawyer to understand it. But at the same time, they also, it gives them an opportunity to pad it a bit with things like this. Like, oh, we're just giving a, an innocent example in case people don't know what algorithms are. But really it just comes out as an ad that's trying to pacify you while you're in the middle of reading how much information Google collects about you. We may combine the information we collect among our services and across your devices for the purposes described above. They are building a profile on you that spans all of their services, including the Android operating system, the Chrome browser, yada, yada, yada. 
For example, if you watch videos of guitar players on YouTube, you might see an ad for guitar lessons on a site that uses our ad products. Depending on your account settings, your activity on other sites and apps may be associated with your personal information in order to improve Google services and make us more money. If other users already have your email address or other information that identifies you, we may show them your publicly visible Google account information, such as your name and photo. That's fine for the most part. And we'll ask for your consent before using your information for a purpose that isn't covered in this privacy policy. Here's a challenge for you. If you've made it this far through the video, this has been a long video. If you've made it this far, I want you to think of one purpose that Google could use your information for that is not covered in this privacy policy, and they would have to ask your permission to use it. You tell me a purpose that is not included in protecting the public, improving Google's services, or just operating the services like normal. Because operating the services I don't have a problem with. Improving Google services and protecting the public are two things I do have a problem with being written into the privacy policy. Improving Google services should be an opt-in thing. Protecting the public is way too broad to be in a legal document. So you, if you're watching this video, try and think of one thing that is not covered by these statements in this privacy policy. And you leave that down in the comments section below. Um, and if you can't think of anything, feel free to leave a comment letting me know that you at least made it this far into the video and you're thinking about it. Now they talk about your privacy controls that you can sort of see what they're collecting about you, control what others see about you across Google services. You can choose whether your personal information is used to make ads more relevant to you. All of these things though don't actually change whether or not the information is collected. It's just whether or not they're using the information. Like I said, I have location history turned off on my phone's Google Maps app. But just because it's turned off, I don't think that means Google's not collecting the information. That just means I can't see the information myself. They don't show me the information because I've got the feature turned off, but they're still collecting it because their privacy policy, like we saw earlier, it says they're allowed to. And even though you can choose not to have your personal information used for ad purposes and you can control what others see about you across Google services. You can choose whether your name and photo appears next to your activity, but you can't actually choose whether or not they collect these things. They are collecting them. You can either benefit from it or you cannot, but they're collecting them. Ways to review and update your information, and then they give ways you can export your data. I've used the Google Takeout feature before. There's actually a website, takeout.google.com. I used this about uh, eight or nine months ago when I started switching over from YouTube to Vimeo for nerdonthestreet.com's video hosting. I went here and I turned off everything except for YouTube. And YouTube, you can actually download all of your, your YouTube videos for your account, all of them. The source files that you uploaded, uh, which is actually pretty darn cool that you can do that I will say it was a mess. It was an absolute mess. The downloads failed over and over again, and then the links expired, and I had to have Google regenerate more download links a couple of times. But I was downloading hundreds of gigabytes of YouTube videos, so that's a little understandable. If you do want to move off of Google, I highly recommend that you use this takeout function before they take it away. Um, this is one of the few really good things that Google still has going for them is that they give you this takeout function. You know, if you use Google Chrome, you can download all your Chrome data, including your browsing history and bookmarks. You can download it and import it into Firefox. Uh, you can download all your Google Drive files and upload that stuff to Nextcloud. You can even choose which formats to download them in. You should change it to open document format um, for better Linux compatibility and Mac compatibility. It's cross-platform. You can download your books from Google Play Books. That's pretty neat. Google Play Music, you know, you can download a lot of stuff from here. Your, your notes from Google Keep and put them in standard notes instead or something. And I'm not saying you need to stop using Google services altogether because I'm still using them. Like I said, I've got a Gmail account. I've got an Android phone myself, but I have started migrating myself away. Anything important at all, I use Fastmail for. Um, my Gmail account is just for some publicly facing stuff and YouTube, basically. Notes are an incredibly personal thing, so I have switched those over to standard notes because I don't feel comfortable with Google looking through all of my notes that I just jot down in a moment's notice without really thinking about them. You don't need to, you know, delete your entire Google account. They give you an option for that. 
you're not going to do that. We all know you're not going to do that. But I highly encourage you guys to to think about this stuff. You know, this this stuff is in their privacy policy. You know, here we go. They're defining what legal reasons would be for sharing your information. External processing, which we've talked about, how that goes wrong a lot. Legal reasons, any applicable law, any applicable law at all. They don't specify a country. And it's not just as required, it's also as permitted by law to protect against harm. And then just even throwing the law stuff out, detect, prevent, or otherwise address fraud, security, or technical issues, which is entirely up to their definition. Investigation of potential violations of their terms of service, which their terms of service, once again, this is a document that they wrote. This is not a law. Terms of service, this is how they want you to use their services. And now they can read through your emails and your documents to make sure that you're not potentially violating their terms of service, which do include not using their services for things like abuse, which is defined by them, not using their services for harassment, which is defined by them. And they can investigate potential violations by looking through your data. Think about this stuff and just consider moving some of your, some of your stuff off of, off of Google. I still use Google Calendar right now. Uh, that's the biggest one that I'm still on in terms of Google services. I use Google Calendar because my family uses Google Calendar. Uh, but I'm looking into to other services. I've already switched most of my important email off of Google, and I've switched all of my note-taking, 100% of it, off of Google. Nerdofthestreet.com no longer uses YouTube. YouTube could go down today, and Nerd of the Street would still have all of our videos available on our website. So I'm taking small steps to move myself away from Google. Let me know down in the comments what you think about all these, these things in Google's new privacy policy, and think about doing some of that yourself. That's uh, all I wanted to say in this video. This was like, like I said, really off the cuff thing. Was not planning on even recording today, but I got that email and I got a kick out of it. I wanted to share it with you guys. So for now, I've talked long enough this morning. I'm Jacob Kaufman. I'm the nerd on the street. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.